In today's Sharp Saturday video, we're going to start a series within a series, and we're going to start by taking a look at a knife that has probably inspired more variations and more current versions than any other knife I can think of in the last couple hundred years. I'm talking about the Kephart knife. And we're going to start this series within a series with this Kephart knife, the K-Bar Ethan Becker collaboration of the Kephart knife. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for trustworthy information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me. And as I said, today we're going to talk about the BK62, the Ethan Becker designed K-Bar knife produced Becker knife. And this one is uh, got some pretty good history behind it. We're going to talk about that, but first, I would be remiss if I didn't give a big thanks to the folks at Big Daddy Unlimited for sponsoring these Sharp Saturday videos because one of the best ways you can support the channel financially and save yourself some money is to get yourself a Big Daddy Unlimited membership. When you sign up through my link at survivalonpurpose.com slash BDU, uh, you'll get a great deal and they'll throw me a couple of bucks and you'll get your first 30-day membership for just 99 cents. Big Daddy Unlimited uh, used to be my favorite place for things that go bang, but now it's becoming my favorite place to look for things with blades because, as an example, they have the best price I've found on this knife anywhere. Uh, actually, K-Bar's price is $193.97, but Amazon has it for about $125. Bucks. Big Daddy Unlimited is $112.99, so you really can get close to dealer pricing on all the stuff that you like that goes bang and things with blades and all kinds of cool outdoor stuff. If they happen to be out of stock on something you want, just click that little notify me button. As soon as that stuff hits their inventory, you'll get an automatic email letting you know it's there. So Big Daddy Unlimited, don't forget, get your first month for not just 99 cents at survivalonpurpose.com slash BDU. Now, okay, I know you want to do the knife stuff, but before we get started doing the knife stuff, uh, can we do just a little bit of a history lesson? I promise I'll keep it short and won't do a lot of extraneous rambling, but I think it's important because this is a very historical design and uh, especially this particular model, the K-Bar model. So let me just give you a quick history lesson and we'll start doing some of the knife stuff. So first of all, if you're not familiar with who Kephart was, uh, Horace Kephart was a librarian born in 1862 and he was also an avid outdoorsman. Sometime around the turn of the century, uh, around the early 1900s, he moved to the Great Smoky Mountains area in North Carolina and he spent a lot of time uh, camping and hiking and fishing and hunting and stuff like that. He wrote a series of articles for Field and Stream magazine based on his experiences and he actually compiled these into a book in the early 1900s called Camping and Woodcraft. Uh, a few years later, he ex greatly expanded this book and um, turned it into two volumes. The first one was, is Camping, the second one is Woodcraft. And he, in, in these books, he's got a lot of his philosophies, a lot of details. Some of it's relevant today, some of it's not. But one of the things he talks about is what he considers um, the perfect tool, perfect knife, or at least his best take on, a, on a, a, an outdoor knife that would be functional in, in everything, do pretty much everything that somebody who is, who is um, living on their own, kind of away from civilization, needs. And he had these knives custom made for him and they, they became a uh, kind of a thing of legend amongst people, especially people who are really into the uh, history of, of, of camping and woodcraft and outdoors. A lot of people started making these design knives and, and trying to, based on his writings. Well, Ethan Becker, who is a world renowned knife designer and outdoorsman, and he, he's responsible for the BK line of knives from K-Bar. And I had the pleasure, by the way, of meeting Mr. Becker a couple of times. It was, it was extremely, um, extremely just interesting. He's a, he's a super cool guy. But he was actually able to get his hands somehow on an original Becker knife. And there's one in a museum somewhere in North Carolina, but it's been sharpened a lot, so it's not necessarily in the, uh, in the same you know, original configuration. The one he was able to get his hands on was pretty much unused or very, very lightly used. And so he took, he took all the specs and the dimensions of that, and this BK-62 is as close a copy to the original Kephart design as possible. The only real deviation is that he used uh, bolts and screws for the handle instead of rivets, so they could be kept tight and just wouldn't, uh, wouldn't get, get loose on you. But other than that, the steel is as close to the original steel as he could come up with. Everything is based, um, he just, he, he made as close a copy as he could, is my point. So uh, we're gonna see 
how well this thing really performs and see if we can figure out why it's become such a popular a popular design to 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 kind of to springboard off of for different knives and i got to tell you just holding this thing in my hand it feels extremely extremely comfortable so now with the history lesson behind us let's uh, talk about the specs of this thing and we'll get to doing some of that knife stuff this knife features a five and one eighth inch blade of, of 0.15 inch, inch thick 1095 Crovan carbon steel, which as I said, is as close to the steel that the original maker used as possible. For those of you still stuck in that old metric system, that is 13.1 centimeters long by four millimeters thick. It's a flat grind with a 20 degree secondary bevel with a Rockwell hardness of 56 to 58. The blade width this way is 1.188 inches or three centimeters. The overall length is nine and five eighths inches or 24.4 centimeters. And it has a full tang and a tapered tang. So the tang is a little thinner back here. It just helps with it with the overall balance of the thing. You can kind of see that if you look closely. Has a walnut handle and it weighs 6.4 ounces or 181.4 grams. It features a really nice molded leather sheath isn't it really nice and both the knife and the sheath are made in the usa and like i said the price on this knife the msrp is 193.37 uh the best price i found it for is big daddy unlimited for 112.99 so there you go now let's get to doing some knife stuff Okay, in order to be consistent, maybe the first thing we should do is the old redneck sharp test. Like I say, this has already been used, uh, you know, reasonably well for a little while. So let's just see how well she does the sharp test. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's got a nice edge on it. Okay. Passes the sharp test. How about paper? Everybody always wants to see paper. Okay, we'll cut some paper. <laughs> okay, so I think somebody told me the reason they like to see paper is because they can tell if there's any snags, if there are any little snags in the blade. All the way down, just smooth as silk. So we got paper. Now, we got to do a little batoning because that's how I roll. I know a lot of people don't like that, but you know, I don't care. <laughs> Let's see, this is some pretty solid stuff. Let me know, I'm gonna get a short one. Let me get a, this is, uh, I believe this is oak, so this is really solid. Let's just see how well it splits because that way it's in camera better. Ready, here we go. Now, I know Horace Kephart might be rolling over in his grave right now. Somebody have dared to beat the heck out of a knife, but we're going to do it anyway. I don't care. So, trying to cut me out some stuff here to do a little carving on. And again, this is, this is oak. It's kind of stringy. Maybe not the best feathery wood, but let's just see. All right, so we got that. Shall we try some feathers? Let's see if we can carve some feathers out of this oak. I don't like carving oak that much, feathers that much, but you know, it's because it's so stringy and fibrous. But, man, this blade is just, it is absolutely wonderful. There's some oak. Let's try something different. What do you think about that? I think that looks pretty stinking cool. Okay, first of all, there's absolutely nowhere on here to strike a ferro rod. Um, and it's just, there's no sharp edges here intentionally because that's the way cap part designed it. So you don't have uh, any, anything to hurt your thumb if you're doing these kind of push cuts like I was doing when I was carving these little, little tiny feathers. However, I happened to learn recently that my little Swiss Army Classic that I carry with me all the time, 
the nail file on it will strike the heck out of the uh, Exotec Fire Rod XL, which by the way is my favorite ferro rod ever. The only problem with these is that Exotec can't seem to make them fast enough. <laughs> they keep selling out of them. So let's just see what we can do here. No fat wood. This is straight off, straight carved out of the middle after we baton something down. So let's just see. Oh, there we go. It takes a minute sometimes with the raw wood like that, but she's going and she'll continue to go now. She's burning up good. So if you really insist that your knife or has the capability to strike a ferro rod, you could file this down a little bit, but I'm gonna just point my finger and say shame on you if you do because it's just <laughs> carry a striker if you want to carry this knife. Chuck Norris narrated Morgan Freeman's life. So, um, that's some of the kind of, some of the normal knife testing I do with, with every knife, uh, every fixed blade knife anyway. I want to couple, address a couple other things with this knife before we wrap this up. First of all, the way this grip is, it's got the, the handle, it's got this little, little flare right here, and then kind of rounds back down right there. It's, it's very smooth, it's flat, um, it, it, it indexes in your hand just perfectly. I've talked to people with big hands uh, that, that like this knife, uh, I have medium sized hands, I like this knife. It just seems to fit really, really well. That right there, that little hump right there, just, just, just your hand just, just seems to want to go there. Uh, when you're doing like push cuts like this, the spine is very comfortable and your finger, your trigger finger, so to speak, just kind of goes right in there, just almost perfectly. If you're trying to do close up stuff, you got that little thing right there, you can kind of squeeze that and really, you know, if you want to do this kind of, maybe you're skinning something or doing a little bit of, you know, super, super delicate stuff. It just seems to work pretty good. There's a chest lever, lever style cutting, which means you can, you put the knife backwards in your hand basically, and you pin it to your chest, and that allows you to really get a lot of leverage, but if you mess up, you're not gonna cut anything because you're going this way. But it allows you to pin this and really pull something hard to cut, do some hard cutting. So I got a piece of really dry wood here. We're just gonna try that and show you what I mean. You can just kinda, you can do this right here, and you can really remove a lot of wood quickly, whether you're making tent stakes or just, uh, Carving something down, maybe for a bow drill thing or whatever. This is really dry, it's coming everywhere, but you get the point. So, hopefully, you get that point. It works pretty well. Uh, it works well for that. It just very, very comfortable. It just, man, I'm telling you, I wish there was a way I could, I could, here, I'm mean, just let you try it for yourself because, man, it feels really, really good in your hand. I can absolutely see why. So many people have have tried to uh, put their own take and emulate this design. I think Horace Kephart got this one right, and I am a big thanks to Ethan Becker and the folks at K Bar for taking the time to uh, really kind of do an homage to him and and really create as close to an original as possible and, and make that available to to the to you and I, you know, on a mass level because. You know, Kephart had these things made custom for him, and there's only a, a, one or two that I know of in existence. One's in a museum, and one Ethan Becker has. There may be some more that, you know, he knows where they are, but I don't know where they are. But uh, K-Bar did a great job on the, on the construction of this thing and the manufacture of it. It just feels really good. Again, made in the USA. The uh, sheath's made in the USA. And, uh, you know, I bought this one. And the best price I found them for, again, is Big Daddy Unlimited for like, what would what I say? 113 bucks. So I think if you're looking for a really versatile, extremely, extremely comfortable, very useful blade design, this could be a good one for you. And you may have noticed something here in this review that I have failed to do. And I'll just go ahead and tell you right now, um, I am not going to balance test these kept part designs, at least not this original. We'll, we'll check some of the other ones out and see, but a couple of reasons for that. First of all, I think Harsh kept part would probably uh, frown strongly upon my balance testing procedure because that's not the things that you should do with a, a useful tool that you depend on in the woods 
Uh, but uh, the other thing is it's got wooden handles and, and uh, you know that's just that's just that's a recipe for disaster and this is too pretty to me i'm i'm, I'm just i'm gonna I'm going to honor Horace Kephart's memory and treat this thing with the respect which I think it deserves. So anyway, <laughs> that being said, we'll continue balance testing on other designs throughout the series. And so I'm going to intersperse these Kephart knives throughout the uh, Sharp Saturday series here. And hopefully you'll find them interesting and we're going to look at some other people's designs. Some of the, some of the ones we look at may not even call themselves Kephart, but, but it's going to be my decision as to whether I think they are, they kind of fit in that Kephart design category. So, so anyway, I hope this has been helpful. I really appreciate you watching Survival on Purpose. If you want to make sure you can continue to watch Survival on Purpose, even if the uh, cancel culture cancels me, I invite you to go to survivalonpurpose.com slash subscribe and get signed up for my weekly email newsletter. Every week I'll send you an email with um, news from the week, kind of behind the scenes stuff. There's always a blast from the past video from one of my older original completely doofus videos and any any cool offers deals or news i think you might be interested in um, and i won't spam you it's just going to be one email a week so that's survivalonpurpose.com slash subscribe i really appreciate your support once again my name's brian you're watching survival on purpose remember survival's not an accident so be prepared i'll see you next time